Okay, sorry about that. We are back. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, I am really looking forward to today. We're going to be talking with Julie, who um, is a bar and bat mitzvah and wedding planner, but we're going to be focusing today specifically on bar and bat mitzvahs. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and bring her on to join us. Julie. Hi guys. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. I'm noticing my hair looks weird. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I was like these um frizzies from not yes. having my hair done in months is uh whew, it's it's rough. <laughs> I know about three minutes ago I was like slathering the moose on <laughs> a lot of hairspray. I didn't even have like lipstick. And my mom was like, you really need to put lipstick on. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it's locked down. What's, what's the difference? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I thought we would start with just letting you go ahead and introduce yourself and a little bit about your company. Yeah, so um, Julie Pagani, and I own Jubilation Events by Julie. Um, we're a full-service um, event planner. Um, and we specialize in um, Jewish events. We do all sorts of events, but we um, have really honed in on the nuances of doing mitzvahs and Jewish weddings and um, celebrations. Great. Um, can I confess something? I probably had known you for like four years before I realized it was jubilation, like with the L. <laughs> I was... Yeah. I think I was talking to Courtney one day. I was like, I can't find Julie online. Like, why can't I find her Facebook page? Or it was something like that where I kept spelling, yeah. spelling it wrong. So I get it right. now. Very clever. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The play on Julie. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'd gotten, like, emails from you. It didn't matter. I was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was yeah. And if you go to um, jubilation.com, like, without the L, it's a band in, like, um in Atlanta or something like that so apparently they have my email and they send me stuff often of people who are trying to contact them <laughs> or contact me and they've contacted them instead well so. that's you, know, you have a new friend <laughs> yeah exactly exactly that's so funny um uh, okay so we are gonna jump in I'm gonna say hi to Izzy Izzy barking is barking <laughs> <laughs> I know I saw him like yay <laughs> okay so we're gonna start Kind of easy. Why do you think it's important to hire a professional planner for an event like a bar or bat mitzvah? I think that um, a lot of people look at uh, this event in two ways. So one, you know, the reason you're having the bar or bat mitzvah is because you're mo marking a time in your child's Jewish life of them becoming an adult. And um, with that said, the focus really is supposed to be on them learning the Torah and learning all of the prayers. And, and between that and um, Izzy will be able to say this, and a 13-year-old child, a teenager, and school, there are so many things that are going on in your kid's life that the last thing you have time to focus on is um, what's the deadline for my RSVPs or did I make sure to include on the RSVP card um, information like, uh, sorry, the printer just went off. <laughs> um, did I include information on the print on the RCP card, like what the person's name is? Um, so there are so many people who have said to me, you know, I need someone because I can't keep track of all the details and the dollars you're going to spend on a planner you are going to save tremendously by not having making mistakes and you know getting the best rates in all of your other all of your other items so you kind of have to think of it as a personal concierge and like a mitzvah present to yourself mm. yeah that's a really good it i'm sure i mean i haven't personally planned an event of this magnitude but i've certainly been to plenty of them <laughs> and mm -hmm. photographed plenty of them and I didn't even think about like the how small the details are like thinking about like the lines on the RSVP card I mean how many wedding invitations have I looked at I, it never even occurred to me that like if you don't have someone helping you with that 
you have to make sure you do that correctly. <laughs> right. So, wow. Okay. Well, um, I'm sure you help with a number of things, but what is the thing you feel like your clients struggle with most during planning and how are you able to help them with that for mitzvahs? I think that people um, have a really hard time if you're, if, if you're an analytical minded kind of person or, you know, if you've never done events before, you have trouble visualizing what is this event going to look like? So what are the tables going to look like? And how does that match with whatever the happening with the linen? And how do you have kids on one side versus, um, you know, adults on a different side? But how do you get everyone to mingle together? So I really work on... Um, Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I really, I really work on making sure that they can see the event because I think when people are able to see what the room is going to look like, what the room is going to feel like, they have a much easier time being able to make decisions. Um, so I would say almost 80% of what I work on is what when you walk into that space when you walk into that party what is that going to look like and that goes from the littlest details of when we choose the font on your invitations i'm i'm a stationary snob i'm going to say it out loud <laughs> but like i want the font and the colors on your invitation to be the same font and colors that is on your um your place cards or on your sign -in board and uh, that's the part where I really am able to help pull all of the details together. You know, people know they need to hire a photographer and they know they need to hire a DJ and they know they need a space. But there are a thousand and one other details in between there. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, I have a list of the vendors that I choose. And Don, you as one of them know that I'm really picky about who I choose because who your vendor is, it, it's like you're, you're dating them. You can't, you know, you make such a great relationship with the bar and mitzvah kids by doing that pre-session shoot. Mm -hmm. And I really emphasize to parents that you need to have that relationship. And I think sometimes without a planner, people don't understand how to choose the right vendor. They just see the dollars and they don't realize what does that dollar amount mean? You know, don't just go for the group on because you're going to get what you paid for. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting to the events that I do where there isn't a planner. If I didn't just happen to have a prior relationship with a particular vendor, we all feel yeah. so disconnected. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? The planner is the one that kind of like brings us all in and makes yeah. sure we all have one shared vision. But without that, when I show up, to a reception, it's, okay, I've got to go talk to the DJ, figure out what they're doing. Are we on the same timeline? Okay, now I have to go talk to the caterer because, you know, I need to make sure that I get table shots before they get sent to the buffet line. And, okay. and I have to tell the DJ that, I have to tell the caterer that, you know, we're all just playing by our own playbook for the night. And, and there's right. no one like gelling it all together to make sure it makes sense for the whole party. Um, yeah. And it's definitely, it's definitely a struggle. I feel like it's easier to have a less experienced vendor on a wedding than it is for something so specialized as a mitzvah party. Like, mm -hmm. or, or I'm sure even Jewish weddings are, are more intricate and less familiar to like a majority of people because it's different. It's not just like playing some music and, you know, letting everyone have fun. Like there's, important ceremonial pieces to it and there's certain ways to get 13 year olds to engage in a party and not just like run amok in the hallway and you know it's right it's hard work and it definitely takes experience um for it to yeah. be a good event right and knowing depending on the crowd do you need security do you not need security um you know if the venue is an open space you don't want the kids to just be meandering and walking all, you know, going everywhere, even just like you're saying, candlelighting, you know, at a wedding, you don't need to take the time to get everyone to come up mm -hmm. to take the picture in front of the candles, you know, all of that, all of that piece. So I'm glad we're able to help vendors feel cohesive. 
Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> well, and I, I got to talk with a few wedding planners last week and I said this to them too. When there isn't a planner, I feel like it falls on me, on my responsibility to like be the planner because I need to make sure you finish candle lighting before I have to leave. Cause I, I'm contractually obligated to have those photos. <laughs> Cause right. it's got but if no one's moving the party along and you didn't want to pay for the whole party or, or, you know, if we wait until all of the grandparents and aunts and uncles went home and now we can't do candle, you know what I mean? There's so many components. And without right. a planner, I have to keep that in the back of my head because these are things that we discussed them wanting to have photographed. So right. I, I always love when there's a planner. <laughs> That's what every vendor says. Every vendor's like, it's just so much easier because you tell us what to do. We don't have to think. We just get to do our job. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Just getting to do our job is so great. Um, so I know that you guys offer like a tiered level of service. So if you could talk a little bit about the difference between having just a day of coordinator for the mitzvah versus having like full planning services and what what clients might benefit from which service? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, our day of is really for, um, or any day of planner, I should say, is really for the mom or parents um, who, you know, has a really good handle, has a creative eye, is very organized, and can manage everything um, on their own, also if they've had other kids. And so basically what happens is we come in about two weeks beforehand and we do a walkthrough, you hand over all the information, and then we're able to execute your vision. Because like I said at the beginning of this, your job is to focus on that service in the morning and not worry, did the DJ set up and did they put the dance floor in the right place? And, you know, did the right linens get set out? you know, focus on your family, focus on your child and let someone else manage the details of your party. Also, so that you can enjoy your party and you don't have the photographer coming up to you saying, do you want to do candle lighting? And then the DJ saying, are we going to do the horror? And then this and that, you know, that way you have one person who has your shared vision and can execute for you. Um, and then the other levels are depending on what your comfort level is. So there are some people who have really, really busy like schedules and lives or have never done an, a mitzvah or their mom did their wedding for them. So they don't know, they don't know the nuances and they want someone to deal with the vendors and r do contracts, um, especially with everything that's going on right now with COVID. You know, I have worked and I'm sure other vendors too, but I've worked with my lawyer on creating um, phrases to add into people's contracts regarding specifically about pandemics. And people are really apprehensive at the moment. And that's part of what full service planning offers you is this person to hold your hand the entire way. And if you love making centerpieces, by all means, like make your centerpieces. Mm -hmm. But the full service planner is there to help source things for you or help bounce ideas off um, and to take care of the, you know, all of the things. The checklist of things that you need for a mitzvah, uh, it's about four and a half pages in like size 10 font to make oh sure God. every detail is taken care of. So, you know, the full service person takes care of all of those check marks versus when you're day of you've got to make sure all those check marks are done. Um, you know, I am a person of transparency and whether you hire me full service or you hire me for day of, I'm going to give you the checklist because I want your event to be a success. Mm -hmm. But I also want to make sure when I show up the day of, like there is nothing that's going to jump out and surprise me. Um, yeah. So I want to make sure your event is is successful and that I am able to execute that vision. Uh, it's just a matter of how much handholding you need ahead of time. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about, you know, when families have had multiple children go through things, I'm sure there starts to become some famili familiarity with all of the vendors that need to be contacted. And I feel like a lot of times families will reuse the same vendors and locations because it went mm -hmm. so well the first time. Right, um, yeah. They say a lot of times, okay, 
The first meeting is, all right, I want you to book all the same people. We're good. Save the date. And I'll talk to you in like five months. <laughs> That's the difference between a first time mom and a second time mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even with some of my photography clients, it's like the first time we talked on the phone and then we met in person and then we decided, okay, we're going to do this. And, you know, we go through the whole process. We met in person two more times. And then like the second kid, it's an email. <laughs> you still have to <laughs> exactly. last time? Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, awesome. but that says a lot um, as a vendor that someone is so comfortable and so grateful of your work that they are basically just like, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is nice. I, I wish that's something I could explain to any of my clients and, and anyone who's hiring a professional vendor is to kind of let your guard down and trust that these are professionals because I think we all perform better when we get to do our job and do yeah. it, you know, without the worry of like, are they going to be okay with this? And, and I'm not sure how comfortable they are and things like that. Like it, I know at least for me being in a creative field, like it hurts my creativity sometimes when I feel like I'm not trusted and obviously I right. work really hard to, to earn that trust. But I know some people, I don't know if it's like just wanting to have control over things or just being nervous and anxious and a lot of money and it's a big event and you have a lot of family flying in from all over the place to be here. Um, but I think we all perform better when we feel trusted and we can just execute what we know so well how to do. Right. And that's the other benefit of having a planner is you are getting their vendors that they have worked tons and tons of events with and so the trust of what they put into me automatically transfers over mm -hmm. you know to the event that's true that's true so um we'll end out with um, me asking for some tips from you but i thought in before that we could talk a little bit about um just what you're mentioning before with the pandemic um what are some trends in changes that you're seeing coming forward or what are ways people can still celebrate with social distancing? Just if you have any things to share for someone who might be ready to just cancel altogether because they think it's just not possible right now. Yeah, um, so, you know, your child has worked for over a year and for some people who've had their events postponed and postponed and postponed again, um, it's really, you're dealing now with that mental trauma um, to your kids. And so I really would strive to tell people, have the service. And if you need to live stream the service, live stream the service, um, you know, or you're allowed to have a few people, but, but ha let your child do that accomplishment. Because at the end of the day, we have to remember it's about them. And we need them to feel really good about what they have done. Um, and then when it comes to the party, you've got so many options. You can do, we, we are doing for several clients now, these Zoom virtual parties. And we send candles and little gifts to everyone. And we do the virtual, we do a candle lighting virtually. Um, we have, we're doing the Hora. And so um, we've figured out a way, like it's with a little bit of camera tricks, but it looks like you're going like up and down in the chair and everyone's dancing in their homes doing the Hora. Um, we play the montage, you know, for everyone to be able to see and share the screen. So uh, there are ways that you can do that. Um, some people are like, I really want a party. And um, we have uh, assigned tables so that they're by family. So instead of there being a table of 10, there's now a table of four or a table of three or a table of two. And your table is just your family. Um we're moving most everything outdoors, which in Florida is challenging. One, because it's like 9 million degrees <laughs> right now. Um, but secondly, you know, you don't know about rain. And so dealing with tents um, and fans. Um, but I would really suggest like if you're is if you move outside, if you're continuing to do if you choose to have a party, the best thing really is to ask questions of your vendors because in each area, you know, your DJ, your photographer, you know, talk to Dawn. I'm sure she has a plan for if we need to move this outside, 
how do we still capture this moment? Or if you talk to your DJ is, all right, well, we're going to have all the food and everything under the tent, but we're going to do dancing, you know, separate. Um, There are silent parties as they're um, called, because sometimes you can't have noise blaring out, you know, at 11 o'clock at night. Um, So there are vendors that are doing silent parties and their headphones that are sanitized. um, They're new like earmuffs for every single person. And so you can be spread out over, you know, half an acre if you really wanted to. I wouldn't suggest that, but you can (laughs) spread out and do social distancing and still be listening to the music without having to blare it. And so there are so many options for people to be able to do receptions, to be able to make people feel safe um, and, and, and continue to do them in this, in this age. So I'm happy to talk to anyone, you know, whether you hire a planner or not hire a planner at the end of the day, I'm here for the kids and I want these kids to feel so good and so proud of themselves. Uh, that I, I, I want I want to be able to share that with everyone. Wow, that's awesome. Um, those are some really great ideas. I didn't think about how helpful a silent party could be right now because it would let everyone mm-hmm. spread out farther. Right. And you don't have to worry about the sound. Like, that's such a great idea. Plus, I love photographing silent parties because <laughs> people, it's like their inhibitions are down more because... <laughs> They have headphones in. I don't understand the relation to it, but everyone is like dancing so much harder. And like, it's just, it's a lot of fun. (laughs) Well, and I personally think it's so funny when you don't have headphones on yourself and you are watching all these people, like they are boogieing down and you hear nothing. (laughs) It's, It's wonderful. Yeah. And I love when they're like lip syncing or they're just straight up singing along. And (laughs) if you don't have headphones in, it is so great. It's so much fun. Um, Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, irregardless of a pandemic, do you have a few quick tips you would give to families for if they're currently planning or let's say they watch this a year from now and they're planning their bar, their child's bar bat mitzvah? um, Just a few quick tips you would give about the planning process. Yeah, uh, the first one I would definitely say is um, make sure that you have um, a group of of people that your your guest list are really people that will fit with whatever you're you're planning for your party. So you know if you have um, people that want to like rock and boogie and have a really awesome time, then make sure that where you're putting more of your budget is in your DJ. If you to you like the scrapbook and that video at the end means the most to you, then put your money into, you know, photography and and talk to your photographer about kind of what your vision is and then allow them to execute on that. So I I really just urge people to not just think of this as, oh, I'm throwing a party and I need a DJ and I need a photographer and I need a caterer, but really think about what you like and what your guests like and what your kid wants. Um, And it is hard to pull information out of a 13 year old. I understand that, Uh, especially if they've never been to parties. You can't just say, oh, what do you want to happen at your party? Mm -hmm. I ask questions like, tell me what your favorite colors are. What kind of TV shows are you watching right now? What kind of music are you listening to? Um, If you had to put in order, um, you know, music, dancing, games, you know, which, how would you order, order that? So really talk to your kid and find out what it is that they want. Um, Because you, you can do an event on any size budget that you want. It can be huge. It can be small. But at the end of the day, what you want is to walk away saying that was awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest, that's, that's what you want to remember at the end. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I love when I see mitzvah parties that have like tabletop Pac-Man games or like things that you can tell are really what the kid is excited about. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes I have like, like, I don't know what's going on. My mom planned this whole thing. I didn't pick out anything. <laughs> Yes, exactly. (laughs) So great. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Did you have any last words or anything else you wanted to share before we signed off? Um, no, uh, I love Dawn. She's a great photographer. <laughs> so you can hire her. <laughs> I love Julie. <laughs> hire a planner. <laughs> <Pretty Yeah. late. laughs> thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you and hopefully see you soon. All right, bye. Bye.